So getting into volume four of Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. Oh my god. <laughs> this volume. <laughs> I had to go to bed after I finished reading it because I was like, holy moly. Macaroni. It's a lot to take in. It's an emotional roller coaster of me being agitated at Alia and then me being proud of Alia at the same time because in the uh, sort of midway through the volume I was getting irritated at her because she was becoming so sort of destructive of her own behavior being like well I don't want to date I don't like dating she was just kind of in this mood where she was really pushing away at the idea of wanting to fall in love and then at the end, she's just like embraces it more. And it is kind of funny because she does it with her sister where she keeps denying things. But even her own sister can see that, yes, she clearly has feelings for Masa. But at the same time, oh my god, I'm going to say the most controversial thing ever. I'm starting to barrack for her sister. <laughs> her sister is just so adorable and so sweet and so pure at the same time, I, I kind of, there was a part of me in this volume where I'm like, you know what, who cares about Alia? Just be with her. You, you are meant to be the getter. You are friends. You're a past friends. Like, just rekindle with each other and get together because Alia, she just, she just doesn't appreciate you. You, you should just hook up with her. <laughs> I know that's going to cause a lot of controversy. But then at the end of the volume, oh my God, oh my God, I knew it was going to happen. As soon as the park scene came up at the end, and he's like walking to the park, and he's like, oh yeah, I've got to go to the other one. I was like, yeah, he's going to go to the park, and she's going to be there, and it's going to be a whole long time no see kind of thing, and that's where the volume's going to end. I'm like, it's predictable, but it's a good predictable, and that's the thing. Like, whenever you talk about a volume or a story or anything like that, when people say, yes, this is predictable, they assume that that's a negative thing, but it's like, no, you can see what it's trying to set up, and the fact that I can predict it and it plays out like that makes me feel like the author is very clear on highlighting how the story is going to generally go, while there's still some mystery in it as well. It's almost like they give you a clear line of what's going to happen, but then hide some little hidden nuggets on the side, just so you're so focused on the line that you can see that you don't notice all the things around it. I really love this volume. I'm very curious to read volume 4.5 because volume 4.5 is meant to have chapters in between these things. So I'm, I really want to see more of like the park, but I feel like that's going to be volume five. So I'm probably going to have to wait on that. But then I also would like to understand Alia's mindset a little bit more because I just kind of got a little bit frustrated partway through the volume because I was like, she's just been so resistive towards her feelings. And I do have a feeling even though with how the festival ended, because at the end of this volume, for those that are just watching to know what happens in the volume, there's a festival. They go to the festival, and she basically kisses him on the cheek, but he kisses her on the hair. Now, this is the thing. There's this whole king game that happened beforehand that his sister, Yuki, being the wing girl that she is, dares them to kiss. And, of course, the king's game... That, Yuki knew what she was doing. She she kind of could see who was who, who had what stick. So she kind of rigged it in a way so that she knew who was going to kiss. And it was done like that so that, you know, Yuki's trying to push them together. Which is why I've always had this mindset that Yuki isn't trying to be a love interest. Even though sometimes I'm barricade for Yuki too. I just It's just one of those where it's like Yuki is clearly playing her own game and I feel like a lot of people that don't understand the story are just assuming the normal generic trope of oh sister she's got a brother complex she clearly wants to be with her brother incest but it's like no that's not what's going on and that's the thing about the story it's very self-aware of the trope and it's trying to take that and spin it and throw it back at the audience Yuki and this might be a bit of a hot take Yuki kind of reminds me of Deadpool I know, that's a hell of a weird sentence to say, but let me let me cook. 
She reminds me of Deadpool because she's very self-aware at pointing out tropes within the media itself. And she's like breaking the fourth wall of being like, hey, this happens in light novels and mangas. So I'm going to play around with it and pretend, but I'm not really actually interested in sleeping with my brother. I'm just trolling you because this is the automatic thing you all assume is going to happen because that's the trope. It's like she is there to basically meta play the whole reader and the anime audience into thinking something that it's actually not. And it really does kind of give a bit of a tourist test to those that don't understand what she's trying to do. Where, yeah, she's just making fun of that incest trope that happens within mangas and light novels. So that's why I really like her, because she is just playing a whole different game but it makes sense in the story as well because she's like a full-blown otaku she loves that kind of stuff she just likes playing around with those fantasies of being the villain the whole oh i'm gonna get with my brother kind of trope and it's not real but she really actually wants him to get with alia though when they're going out on the beach trip and everything for the festival (laughs) he's on top of Alia's sister because they're all in different rooms and Alia's sister's like coaches Musa to come into her room to sleep in there because the other the other people in the group from the, uh, the council two of them are dating or two are dating in the group that they're hanging out so he, she's like oh yeah 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 let's give them some personal time you can come sleep in my room and then she's like oh well I'll sleep on her bed because we won't have you sleep on her bed because that'd be weird so you can sleep on my bed and then of course predictable she would get inside of his, her bed her own bed which would have muscle in it and then they would cuddle and then he'd try to escape he'd fail she'd wake up she'd fall back to sleep things would get a bit awkward but then suddenly a knock happens and then things just kind of get chaotic and he ends up falling on her and then Yuki walks in pulls out a phone takes a snap and just gives a thumbs up and then walks off I'm just like oh my god like that's what I mean Yuki's just like hey you want to you want to have a couple of babes on the side knock yourself out I'm here to support you bro like she's not interested in being with him she's just interested in seeing the chaotic nature of him having these two babes be at him and it's just like oh my god that's the point where i was kind of barracking for alia's sister i was like oh my god i so so almost want them to get to i'm a i'm a shipper now which is funny because they actually also have a shipping joke in this volume too there's so much stuff that happens in this one i don't know if i'm going to get to it all but i'll try so (laughs) in the first part of the volume You've got the backstory between the sister's bad health, which goes over the mother's approval, where the the son, Masa, really tries to get her approval. And there's a whole thing that I want to talk about there, because I don't agree with Masa's mindset. Then you've got the family problems, the father's work, the sacrifices he made, and then the problems at school where he's getting into fights. Yuki's not going to school because of her health problems. They're bullying her. And then he just ends up beating the living snot out of them. Then you've also got the grandfather. Which one of them is trying to be like overly like weird about things. Being like oh you know I expect more blah blah blah. Waste of talent. And then the other one's just more chill and relaxed. Which is the one you know that learns Russian. Is obsessed with Russian stuff. And then... We go into the whole stuff with Yuki, the maid, and then being at his place, them getting ready to go on their kind of little date, as I like to call it, but it's more just them kind of doing fun stuff together as siblings, and Yuki kind of throwing the maid at him, nude, which is, this is the thing, it could still be technically a harem, just the sister won't be part of the harem, because the sister, I... Again, I stand by this. I don't think the sister's interested in him romantically. She's just trolling the living hell out of everyone. But she's kind of almost pushing the maid on him as well. And then you've got the two sisters. That's three girls. Now, the maid's very st- like got a very like steel face. Doesn't really show much emotions. But I do have a feeling that the maid might be hiding some things. Like, I feel like as the volumes go on, maybe the maid might come out of her shell a little bit more. And maybe there might be a little bit of potential of her showing some feelings towards him that's a potential just thinking out loud there 
And then you've got the date itself, as I call it, even though it's not really a date, but it kind of is a date. And then one of the other individuals from the school, being the girl that they got into a debate with, ends up being there with her friend. And she's getting really angry with Masa because Masa's with Yuki, not with Alia. Until her blonde friend basically just says they're siblings. And that's when they let slip that, yeah, they're siblings. Which leads into the whole reason why this other chick got angry at them being together rather than Masa Riv Alia is because of shipping. Because she originally shipped them and then felt like Masa was cheating on Alia. I'm like, oh my god. This is like a meta joke at shippers that are like how toxic they are. Which... Okay, I, I am kind of shipping a little bit in some of the, this volume, but I'm like, I'm not going to, like, do stupid stuff on, like, social media because someone doesn't agree with my headcanon. But I don't even have a headcanon. I'm just confused because I almost want him to get rid of all the girls. So, you've got that. Then you've got the whole study group, and... I took a screenshot of the particular page and I talked about it on social media and I was like, this is why Yuki is so funny. Because she's making like <laughs> pee pee jokes about him getting his crotch warm over earlier because of this whole idea of like, he's like talking to Yuki. He's like, oh yeah, you know, I had her around for study and nothing weird happened. And she's just like, really? Really? You had a girl around the house and you didn't at least try and make a move on her? Like Yuki is the one pushing him to get with Alia. She's the one telling him, why haven't you banged her? What? And she's just like, excuse me, brother, excuse me. <clears throat> You had nice, attractive girl in house. Why didn't you take her to your room and get your crotch warm? And mm, 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 mm. like, that's what she's saying in the volume. I'm just like, oh my God, she is so boost. Mm. Yes, you go, sister. <laughs> and this, this is why Yuki is so good. She just says what she's feeling. She's a, she's so vibrant, fun, energetic charismatic but then she's got that dark not dark in the sense of like evil but dark in the sense of like mysterious but mischievous personality i love it absolutely love her for that then i kind of lose my train here then you've got the actual date that he kind of has with alia which led to lingerie shopping <laughs> you'll just love the way he just kind of wings it and then you've got the train trip Masa's past girlfriend and them all being curious about it, which clearly Alia's sister knows who it is. And that's who turns up at the end of the volume at the park. And then you've got the beach episode. Him falling over her, grabbing a good copper feel. And that's where I kind of got a bit annoyed with her because I was just like, okay, I get it. She felt embarrassed and all that. But it's like, you clearly like him. You keep saying it in Russian, but then you keep pushing him away. I'm like, Argh. it's just, she's in denial, but then she won't admit it to even her own sister. But at the same time in Russian, she says things that are like really provoke, like really like heavy going. Like, you know, I don't mind if you kiss me or grab me. Like, I just like, I'm like, girl, 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 you're frustrating me. I get it. You're in denial, but sweetie, sweetie, just, just, Admit it, you're in love with him. It's okay. It's okay. And then, as I said, the whole sleeping situation with uh, Mario, Alia's sister, and Masa, and the body pillow kind of thing. As soon as, like, Alia's telling, like, others about the body pillow thing, I was like, yep, yeah, that's going to happen that night. And it happened. Like I said, predictable, but good predictable. And then the whole King's Game, which led to the festival kissing. What I thought was interesting, and this is where I want to get into two parts. The festival itself, which is, of course, him trying to overcompensate, him trying to really, like, make her happy, show off, but he keeps failing. And that's him, I think, trying too hard at being someone that he doesn't need to be. He just needs to be him. And that's who Ali likes, him. And I think sometimes he over-tries, which ends up making things worse. And then he goes into the whole backstory, which I will just about get into, in his mind when he's in all self-doubt mode, which I thought was cute at the end, the way they kind of kiss, because she kisses on the cheek, he kisses on the hair, which <laughs> which is funny, because then she grabs her own hair and kisses it, because it's like an indirect kiss on the lips. He could have kissed her on the lips, and she would have allowed it. And that's the thing, she would have allowed it. 
and they could have kissed. But here's the reality. I know how this is going to go. Volume 5, because we're not really going to count 4.5 because it's going to be side chapter stuff, which I'll still read. But Volume 5 is just going to be her being in denial again and her pretending that never happened and her being all awkward. And it's going to be this whole shy period between them because she's just going to be really like, oh, but I don't like him, but I do like him, but I'm in denial. And ooh. I'm just going to be like, oh my God, I'm going to like strangle you, you, you frustrating, beautiful girl. I know that's how that's going to go, because that's Alia in a nutshell. And that's where they're going to have to kind of break down the walls. But there's a lot of past stuff that seems to need to be broken down. And this is where I'm going to get into the real hot take. I don't agree with him. His whole mindset of him blaming himself for everything that happened, I do not agree with him. He is not at fault for what happened in the past. He keeps blaming himself as like it's his fault they broke apart. It's his fault his mother turned. No, your mother is at fault, clearly. I mean, there's still a lot of context missing. Like, why did she turn against her, like, the husband? Like, he sacrificed things. Like, he sacrificed his career. He was happy. He wanted to be with her. Like, there's this family, they're happy, but then something happened where the mother just suddenly is unsatisfied and unhappy with the marriage, which, by the way, this does happen in marriages, where a couple gets together, and either or either person in the in the relationship just decides, I'm not happy anymore, I'm done with this, and they start having resentment for the other family members. And I'm assuming that's what's happened. She's had regrets, she didn't want to be with him after a while, and regretted everything, and decided to start taking everything out on the husband and started being more cold and calculated towards her son. And Yuki puts it upon herself to kind of take the responsibility of being with her mother to not keep her lonely because also she has all these health problems as well. But Masa is blaming himself for it all. I don't agree with that. Again, maybe I'm missing some context. Maybe I didn't read some things properly, but I feel like Masa is not at fault for what happened. He shouldn't be beating himself up, but I think he's beating himself up because he wanted a family. He wanted to be happy all together, and that whole relationship has fell apart, and it's led to him just feeling so inadequate in himself and having so much self-doubt. It just frustrates me because, yeah, in that whole section, he is just beating himself up, and I think that is something that's going to be quite prevalent throughout the volumes, is him overcoming that personal trauma, and once he's able to overcome that personal trauma, then he can get rid of Alia, because he keeps doubting himself, and keeps thinking, and he said in the volume, in the volume itself, that he doesn't deserve to be, be with Alia, because of how much of a piece of S that he is, he doesn't believe he deserves to be happy, and that's the issue. Because of all the family trauma that's happened, he feels like he's at fault, so he believes he doesn't deserve to be happy. But he is not at fault. Now, more context is needed, clearly, to understand why the mother decided that she didn't want to be in that relationship, and maybe the father did something that he doesn't know about. Maybe the father cheated. I don't know. But it's one of those where it's like there needs to be more context to understand what happened and i don't even think he knows i think he only knows a surface level of what's really happened and maybe yuki knows the full story and she's just keeping it away from him because she knows that if her brother finds out the full story it's going to shatter him and it's going to hurt that's another potential of where the story could go I honestly love this volume, but then I love all the volumes. I just love the whole story. I know I've seen a lot of comments of people being like, oh, I really look forward to you reading volume four. It's a great volume. There are so many good things in it, especially with Yuki, but Yuki always keeps making things better and better with how she behaves and the fact that she walks in a room, takes a snapshot of him on top of another girl, her making crude jokes about his crotch getting warm over girls being in his bedroom and spilling drinks and see-free shirts. What's there not to love about this? This is one of the things that I really love about the series, and I do feel like a lot of people that only see small snippets of information about the series are always making judgments based on out-of-context information, assuming that the sister wants to be with the brother, when the whole joke is, is that Yuki's pretending that because that's the assumption that most people make. She's basically making fun of those that make that assumption because of that kind of trope that's in a lot of stories. 
So I think it's hilarious. That's why I refer to her as kind of like Deadpool. Because in Deadpool, he breaks the fourth wall. He's always kind of like looking at the crowd in, in the movies and going, you know, breaks the fourth wall, pokes fun at, you know, Marvel itself. With Yuki, she's poking fun at the manga, light novel, anime industry and making jokes and snarky remarks about that whole different tropes that come in those different types of series and role playing in that villain kind of situation. That's what makes her such a great character. It's why I love her as a character. And I'm very curious to see where the story goes because the fact that it ended exactly where it ended at the park, I'm hoping maybe there might be an extra chapter in volume 4.5 that goes over that section. But I feel like I'll be waiting until volume 5 before they end up having that conversation where they will rekindle their friendship because I don't know if there's going to be a love interest between them. I Originally, I was in the mindset that Alia's sister wasn't going to interfere on that relationship, but if Alia keeps denying and keeps playing hot and cold, which I just have a feeling that's what she's going to do, she's going to play hot and cold and she's going to like distance herself again because she's going to get nervous about falling in love with him, then that leaves opportunity for her sister to be like, you know what, if, you, if you're not going to actually take it serious, fine, I'll get rid of him. Because she clearly has feelings for him, and there's that past that kind of builds them together. Because he clearly did have feelings for that girl. And he feels bad at the fact that he forgot about her. And if they come back together, there might be some rekindled feelings that might re-spark, and he might start feeling very conflicted of like, well, who do I like? Do I like Alia or do I like her sister? Like, he's going to be backwards and forwards. So I do think there's the potential of a bit of a love drama between the two, but again... Yuki is just completely out of the question. I do think there's a potential for the maid being pushed as well because they keep hinting at the potential of the maid. And the story is still in the early stages. We're only on volume four. So there's still many volumes potentially where the story could go. Maybe it goes 10, 10 volumes, 12 volumes, 15 volumes, 20 volumes. I don't know. But the potential of where the story could go is very much there so again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what did you think of volume four of alia sometimes hides her feelings in russian very much looking forward to reading volume 4.5 and again if you like this video hit the like subscribe for more anime content and share the video again light novel content doesn't do well on youtube so any support in any capacity whether comments likes or shares really does help so i'll see you in the next video